Hello and welcome back to Pandemic Playground with Dave. And today we're going to take a quick look at Warfare 2 Broadside Updates. Which has a lot of new weapons. Alright, so as you can see, there is a lot of new weapons that were included in this update. The update is 1.2. They're going to call it the Warfare 2 Broadside Update. And one of the main reasons for the update, I believe they call it Combat Reimagined, which is pretty cool. And of course, with the update comes a new DLC as well. So it's the Warfare 2 Broadside Pack. So I like doing these videos just to take a quick look at everything that is available now um, from the update and from the DLC pack. And usually I will cover what's part of the free update versus what's in the DLC pack. And of course, most of the time things in the DLC pack is more skin related and not a balance related stuff. So that's always the best part about those things. First off, of course, is the arsenal of new weapons and ammo that's included in the updates. And we placed them all here and we do have a little bit of other little things to talk about, um, like new target locking, um, they change the decoy block, how it reacts, um, things like tanks, like the hydrogen tanks that actually blow up a bit, which is pretty cool, and a lot more other things. Especially like a new custom start with what they call an ast asteroid armory. Um, you have like a new offset seats, which is kind of interesting in some ways. It's just the same seat, but a little bit to the to the side. But yeah, so going through the items here, number one thing we already knew or seen before um, in, before the update came out is this railgun. So the railgun looks amazing. Actually, you know what? Let's just change the color of these things here. I guess we could change to the new woodland camel armor, if anything. All right, there we go. So we cover everything in the woodland camel um, skin just for the fun of it. But yeah, the large railgun has a lot of details. This is pretty cool. Staring down the barrel of it, as you see here, um, it looks it has a lot of details. And if you look throughout the whole entire thing, the little structures, kind of more piping in some ways from the um, industrial update. Uh, but yeah, this thing looks fantastic. It has multiple ports. So you have a port right here on the side, um, left and right. You have one on the, t on the, not the top, the back right here where this cargo container is. Not on the bottom though, but those are nice spots to add on some ammo. So. The railgun itself does use ammo, of course, and it's going to use large railgun sabots, which I believe it's pronounced. <laughs> I could be wrong. So feel free to correct me in the comments down below. So it's going to take these large railgun sabots. We're going to spawn at least one in. So what that looks like is this big old chunk right here. So this we can load into our cargo right here which we have a bunch of here already loaded and we can always control it now we'll talk about that in a second all right all right so we got a decent view right here as you can see we can move this thing left and right like like i said before we'll talk about that in a second but we can shoot this real gun pretty nice and it looks pretty cool so let's just kind of get a nice closer look right here and just shoot into space i guess in three two one you see it charge up and boom that is pretty interesting how it reacts and what it looks like but let's just shoot in front of us to see what that looks like um the one thing about this is that it does take some time to charge after you shoot it so if you look into the control panels and go to the rail gun it has a charging in order to shoot the next ammo all right so we're all charged up we're going to shoot this a little more traditionally um with the view in front of us to see how that's gonna look and then we're gonna shoot it towards the the ground we're gonna shoot that in three two one boom that definitely looks really cool All right so that's a large version or large grid version of the real gun there is a small grid version as well which you'll see here it's kind of the same concept just in a tinier version everything looks about the same the ports are the same as well. You have on the two sides and one in the back. 
and it shoots the smaller um, ammo in this case. So it uses small railgun sabots instead. So it's the same thing as the large version, just with a smaller uh, ammo basically. And that shoots pretty decent and it has a little bit of a recoil too, which is pretty cool. So of course that sounds like a fun little experiment to play around with with the recoil at, it's at some point. So the small railgun sabot right here is this little tiny thing right there. It's the same, it's pretty much the same as the large one, just on a smaller scale as you see. Right, it looks like I had a few on the floor already. Not too, too much to talk about there. So the next part we have here is the artillery. So this one is pretty interesting. I didn't put on a hinge to go up and down for vertical um, aspect of it. But that uses this big chunky boy here, which is going to be the artillery shell. That's, that's the artillery shell itself. I think it might actually be a little bit too big um, compared to the barrel itself. Actually, no, this perfect fit. All right, that's pretty cool. For some reason, I thought it was going to be a little bit bigger than the barrel. Actually, well, if you look through down the barrels right here, it's a little bit bigger <laughs> than the barrel um, a little bit. That's 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 a little bit of an interesting thing. Um, I'm not sure how it's gonna come out. Well, the back half of it sh is not gonna launch. It's the, really the front half, and yeah, uh, not gonna get into it. But this is the ammo, which is pretty cool. And this guy here, if I made it tilt up, it will shoot an artillery and actually will drop down slightly. So if I shoot this one here in three, two, one. Boom, you see that goes forward and then it'll, it'll just drop or not. All right, so that's the artillery firing itself. Uh, I'm not going to show the damage or anything like that. I might experiment with that later down the line um, to see what damage it causes in small grid versus large grid, things like that. But right today, we're just going to look at it in terms of the design purpose and how it works, basically. But so this here is a pretty nifty one. And this one is the artillery turret. So it's pretty much the same exact thing as the artillery, but it's more on the turret style where it has its own movements. Um, you can control it and shoot it and everything like that too. And um, instead of kind of putting it all on like a rotor and things like that. The so same concept as every other turret that's in the, in the game so far. So that's a pretty interesting piece there. The next one we have is this guy's assault cannon, which is pretty interesting. So the assault cannon actually takes assault cannon shells. So the assault, so the assault cannon shells, let's take a quick look. Roughly the same as the artillery, to be honest. So here we go. Is there any real difference? Not as bulky is one thing. Well, it is. On the smaller grid version too, I believe. Yeah, it's a small grid version, so it's not too too bulky. Um, but yeah, it's the assault cannon shell and and this concept. It, again, just to check the barrel, um, it looks like it should be okay, but the opening is a bit narrow, <laughs> to be honest. So yeah. But anyways, stick a shell in there, the assault cannon shell. I don't know if we could put an artillery shell in there and see if it works, but this one is a similar fashion, just shoots straight in a way. Here, so we're going to take a shot in 3, 2, 1. Boom. That makes a big old smoke screen right there, which is pretty cool. And the next one that we do have is also the assault cannon turret. So it's the same thing in turret version, of course. And of course, some of these are limited to small grid only, and some of them are limited to um, large grid only, but not all of them. So like the railgun has a small and large grid artillery, right? The artillery here is large grid only. The artillery turrets, large grid only. The assault cannon is small grid only. The assault cannon turret, this one could be small or large as you see it here. So this is the smaller one versus the bigger one, which has two versus one, um, cannon there. And then the auto cannon, which is the next piece, has small grid version only, and the auto cannon turret, 
is only one as well. So the auto cannon, the way this one shoots, um, it's a little bit different as well. And this one uses a bit of a different ammo and it's going to use these auto cannon magazines. So There's probably some chunky ammo, but that's the auto cannon magazine right here. I spawn a few in here as you see. You see the the big old bullets right there. <laughs> it flips over right there if you can see it. So that is the chunky bullets that are gonna come out of these these auto cannons. So I'm gonna stick a few in here. Alright, so that's pretty much how it shoots. So with this one it's pretty interesting. It's not too too long like the other ones. And this is the turret version, which same thing, you move around and everything like that too. Right, so those are the new arsenal of weapons that we get with the new update, which is pretty cool. Could do a lot with this. Could have definitely used this on my surviving Europa's um, turret walls that I added. So we could have added kind of like a chunky guy like this guy here to uh, make it look pretty nice on the four towers that I had. Or I guess you can call it the prison walls in that case. But the next piece that we get here is also one of the greatest part of this update is going to be these things here, which is the custom turret controller. Large grid looks like that. Small grid looks like this. So these guys can set up your turrets, your weapons, missiles, gatlins, rail guns very easily so that you can maneuver the ro rotor horizontally or horizontal plane and maneuver the hinge on a vertical plane and this is where you're going to see me able to go up down left and right so we used to do this all with the script called the cockpit piston rotor and hinge controller and i've always used that for for a lot of things but now you can easily do it with this one too. So go inside into the control, tur uh, the custom turret control. You don't have to put it specifically on here. You can put it like a program block. You can put it on the side for like the real gun I have on the side here. Um, it is touching it, but it's not going to matter. As long as you program the right things, it's going to be perfectly fine. So the first things that uh, we're going to look into, of course, and we're going to go through this kind of quickly and nothing too in depth. Uh, number one is your, this is the horizontal plane. So I assign the rotor R2, which is the one right below it. And I assign the hinge R2, which is the hinge that it's sitting on. So the this right here is the vertical plane, the elevation. And you want to do, and if you want to play around with, you know, the different velocities, that helps too. If you're like me who always reverse the hinges the wrong way around, by default is plus nine so you just swap it to negative nine to reverse the up and down in that way but if you like it whichever way you like it you can set it negative or positive which is great and then of course you uh, you sign you assign the available tools right down here to link it all into the custom turret controller so once you have all that linked up you can go to your control seat or what this is the helm which we'll talk about in a second um, all you would have to do then is to um, get into your toolbar configurations, throw the control turret, uh, the, the turret controller down here, which this one's the R2, and put in the specific action control. But then when you hit control, you have full motion of the entire thing, as you see here. But it is a little bit shaky, but it's not too, too bad. What else can you do with this? controller another pretty cool thing about this you can turn this into a turret system meaning adding and what they have called here enabling ai so what that does is going to enable the controller to treat this much like a turret where it can move around and aim at enemies or anything you select here so i have everything on and if we were to take this controller enable ai with all what these things targetable which is going to probably target me for the most part enable the ai and you'll see that it's going to start aiming for me and it's going to follow me for the most part so that makes it really really cool 
See if I go left, right, left, right, it's going to move. So right now it's reloading, but once it's finished reloading, it's going to shoot me again. But it's just going to follow me for the most part. And once it loses me, it's probably going to look for something else. Oh, nope, it, looked, <laughs> it just found me and it's trying to shoot me. That is the pretty cool part of um, this update where you can turn a lot of things into like an auto turret in that in that sense. Um, and you can load this whole thing up with multiple weapons. So you could probably put your rail guns, your auto cannons, your assault cannons, put them all into one like rotor hinge setup and it could just track down and shoot things down pretty easily. So that's a pretty interesting um, item that we get with this update. So not that interesting to, at least to me, is the passenger seat offset, which is only on a small grid version. So if I can just kind of show you that, what I mean, what they mean by offsetting. So you get the regular seats right here is right down the middle, right? So here's the block one, two, three, right down the middle, right? And the offset one is going to be kind of towards the sides. So it's no longer towards the middle right there. That's the big difference in terms of the seat. So that is something, I don't know, not too, too interesting to me at least. So I think the purpose of this is to allow you to do something like this where you can offset it to the side. So if you look at the way it builds, it is now a, a two by two block width and lengthwise, not height, versus the three by three with the regular seat. So you can have a nice little seat kind of system here. Could do like a stadium now, I guess, with some offsetting. So that's interesting. But again, it's all small grid mainly. So um, I'm not sure how far that's going to get. The other things we didn't really touch on and we're probably not going to touch too much on is kind of the aiming system. You see a little crosshair reticle right there. You could also lock on by right clicking, as you see here. So that's pretty interesting um, to kind of get that. But of course, there's some limitations to the lock in and everything like that, too. I think it's uh, de depending on distance and things like that. All right. So that is pretty much it for the free stuff with the update of Warfare 2, which is pretty neat. I, I do kind of see me using the railgun. Um, I do see some experiments that I should play around with sooner or later as well with these. So lots more to come on that. All right. So now we're going to jump into some aesthetically pleasing looking items so with the warfare 2 pack if you purchase the dlc as always i do get the dlc pack along with the updates so we can get these neat little things and it's mostly skin stuff so it's pretty cool and here's the first skin remodel and that's the warfare ion thruster so this is the large grid version the large large grid version which looks really cool that's kind of like those vents looking like things and it has like five main thrusting um, pieces to it, which is really, really cool. I haven't really seen it in action um, flying it around just yet, but that definitely looks pretty, pretty nice. And the smaller large grid version looks like this. So it's a little kind of dumbed down, to be honest. I like the large grid, the large, large version a lot better. And then for the small grid version, same thing. It looks exactly like the large grid ones. Um, as you see here, the next piece, which is cool, is going to be the reactors. So this here is actually a large warfare um, reactor. So a large grid reactor where it has the steps, some rails and everything like that. So that's pretty cool. It has it has a port down in the back, bottom and also the top. And this looks really cool. And it's 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 it falls a line with kind of the um, industrial update too. That so looks awesome. So that's not as dated as the <laughs> circular sphere like one that we, we gotten previously. So that one, a pretty cool update, a pretty cool reskin. The smaller version of the large grid looks like this here, which has a bit of a window, shows the insides, and it lights up green when you have uranium in there, but it lights up yellow when it does not. And this one, the small grid has a port in the back. I think it has one in the bottom. Yes, it does. It does have one in the bottom as well. And of course, it does come with the smaller grid version of it as well, which is going to be this here. 
So the smaller grid version of it, it's kind of cylind cylindrical. <laughs> so you have the large version of the small grid and you have the small version of it as well. And these will light up green when you have uranium inside it. Not very impressive upgrade, I would think, because it, it kind of almost seems like the, the former one. Um, but with a bit of new design, but I do see a fun experiment with this one. That's turning that into some wheels. <laughs> and this, of course, are hangar doors. And this is something I've been playing around with recently with the new time lapse um, series, making a space station, um, building a space station. So now I get to play around with a little bit more hangars, although I actually prefer it to be longer but now we got more designs instead which is not too bad so you see this design here which is called the hangar it's just warfare hangar door and then you have this design with the window which is pretty cool um to be honest and then when i when i first put them down on the floor i didn't see any difference until i opened it up so this one is the hangar door windowed and then this one has a little bit more design details. And this is the hangar door too. So these are uh, fairly cool reskins of the hangar. I like this one a lot, the door one. And I think I'm going to use this um, and update my hangar doors in building my space station. What else is left? Uh, we have warfare batteries. So a new reskin of the batteries as well. It has that warning sign. Some wiring on one side plane on another side and of course you have the like kind of the top side as well and the bottom side but it is one face side that shows the control panel and also the amount of battery sets here for the led so these are again reskin of the battery which looks pretty cool too other reskins here we have the updated gatlin gun skin with warfare and the missile launcher right there so those are a bit of a reskin we have a cool little spotlight that we get with the pack as well and as you can see it's following me because you can set this thing up to follow whatever you like um for the most part <laughs> so just like the turrets you can set this up in a way where it follows friendly, it follows a ship, um, follows enemies. So it's it's a searchlight, as they call it. And right now, I have it following friendly, neutral, and everything like that. I, have, I just have everything on, and it's just currently following me. So this part is pretty cool. So it looks a lot better, of course, at night. And as you see, it's on, and it is pretty much tries to follow me as much as possible, which is cool because. I've seen a lot of, um, I've seen some videos of people making these spotlights um, with with some sensors to make make it follow. I just couldn't figure that out for whatever reason um, as well. But now we don't have to because we have a searchlight that can do it all for us, which is cool. All right, so the next piece we have here is the bridge window slopes. So this here is pretty cool. It has two of them. You have the slope that we just saw, and we also have the window face so it's like kind of like a corner piece so you see this here is the slope and then there's the window face which is kind of the corner piece unfortunately it's just large grid uh, for the most part but it does add a uh, pretty interesting aspect to it and i built something similar um for my pertam rover that's something i'm still working on but i built it in a large grid with the half slope block to kind of do the same almost the same thing to cut bottom of the window off. So this is a neat idea that I could implement to that. The another cool piece is this light panel. The light panel actually emits light, which is really interesting. And of course, if it's not emitting light, um, cause it's not connected to anything, there's a small grid version on the floor. Um, it's, it's just stays unlit obviously, but the light panel, it's really, really cool aspect. You do so much with this, I think, in terms of designing and in terms of lights. Ceiling lights, side light, side wall lights, that's going to look great and fantastic in the future, to be honest. All right, so 
the other piece that you saw that I that was hopping into in terms of using the weapons, and that's this thing right here. So what is this? This is the helm. <laughs> it's pretty much a control seat in a way, but you're standing instead of sitting up. So that is a neat little um, piece of equipment, to be honest. So you, it looks like you have one hand on joystick, uh, one hand on a bar here to hold on. A bit of a there's a bit of a keyboard here and some screens that you can also change as well. So that's pretty neat. That's a good addition. I like this addition. It makes it look pretty cool. I think you do a lot with this, especially working with the turrets like I did before or creating your own turret systems like I did before. You also do have the small grid versions as well. I'll just kick the one around as you see here. It's a little top heavy, that's why it drops down like that. But it's the same it's relatively the same design. Um just small grid. Uh, we already talked about the battery. There, we didn't talk about the small version of the battery, which is this here, which definitely looks pretty cool. I think it's the same size as the other one. Yeah, it's the same size as the, the uh, original battery as well. Next one is this vent. So this thing is pretty interesting. So this is the heat vent. So kind of like an exhaust system when you use um, power to go forward or something like that. The vent opens up as you see here so that that way it's supposed to in, like expel heat or whatever the case is but it's just visual looks to be honest i don't know why it's acting like this right now i do have it at zero percent power usage to open the, um so i was hoping it to stay open but it, it's it's kind of open in and out for whatever reasons but yeah they do have a small grid version as well and this little cube right here on the floor so it does the same exact thing and one of the cooler pieces to this is this sliding hatch door. So this is a huge door though. <laughs> so so this is large grid only. And this is a pretty interesting door, which you can do um which you can use this one in two ways. And here's the example of the two ways. One, leave it on the side like this, where once you open it, it slides to the left, and you can walk right through. So this is kind of like a barn door-ish kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it takes two large grid blocks here, as you see. So it's a two by one type of situation. Uh, you do lose a lot of space with this. But you can always cover it up, if, if anything, which is cool. And the other way to do it is to make it more on a vertical um, scale. So you can bring it down this way and walk through. So multiple ways to play around with this one. Um, yeah, once again, this is a bigger door than we're used to. Uh, normal doors is just a one cuber. This is a rectangle. So <laughs> that's going to change a little bit in terms of the design. But it definitely looks pretty cool. All right, so we also do get these benches as well. And these are our passenger benches. And these are strictly, and it looks like, small grid only. So... No large version, unfortunately, but pretty cool still. You can add these right inside here. So it's a little bit of an offset. So it's a two by two by two, length and width, not including height. So interesting little seats here. So we can sit in here and <laughs> relax. But so kind of fits similar to the buggy cockpits. Um, where it takes two blocks instead of three versus like the seat here takes three but we do have the offset offset seats now which we can do um in terms of two right in front of it or behind it or whatever the case is right there <laughs> other than that what you get is the woodland camo armor which i'm using already for everything here but there's also a shark mouth helmet skin which is going to be this here uh, it, Pretty interesting, but I like my prison suit better. <laughs> uh, we get two new emotes as well. So the emotes that we get, number one is the salute emote that you saw in the very beginning. The long emote. <laughs> so you salute for a bit of time, and then you start. You put your hand down, and you move around just a little bit, so not too much. And then you have the rock, paper, scissors. So down here on the bottom of the two bar, it says it has a dice there. So it does sit. I, I think that's indicating that it's random. And it definitely is. So hitting rock, paper, and scissors 
it is gonna show you of course one of three things once you do it you have scissors there hopefully it will change it up last time i did this i got like rock five times in a row before it started changing <laughs> so it was pretty interesting I, I thought that maybe there was no difference in rock paper scissors in this emote but there is so as you see there that's paper and hopefully we'll see the rock nope that's paper again and paper again <laughs> and paper again paper again so this is the situation i ran to previously with just the rock here's more paper so that's five times hopefully it will change up now there we go it changed up so not sure how random it is but it, it sometimes feels like it does kind of get stuck on one more than the other before it changes so not sure what that's about <laughs> all right so that is update 1.2 warfare 2 broadside and also the dlc pack which is I, I, it does have a lot of pretty neat reskins and models to be honest which is cool and like i always say it's up to you if you want to get it i always get it because I, I like the reskins i like to use them for different builds i already see a lot of things of potential that i could use for my space station that i'm building in the time lapse um i do see a little bit of experimenting here especially all the weapons some damage stuff as well as i mentioned before um things do blow up now like the hydrogen tanks um, they also leak a little bit instead of losing your all your hydrogen when you get damaged so things like that is probably going to be something I'm I'm going to be testing. But I think the main focus will be on the space station for the most part. So stay tuned for any other experiments that we're going to have with the Warfare 2 broadside updates. Alright, so that was a sort of a quick look of what the update provided and also the DLC pack has. We could definitely go into more detail, but I'm going to save that for maybe a different video. Hope you guys enjoy the updates. Let me know your thoughts down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.